Hi, my name is Andreas Hense and I make videos on business process automation. Today I have the great pleasure to have Thomas Freitag as my interview guest. Thomas is a German computer scientist and a professor at DHBW University in Karlsruhe. Thomas is also the father of Wopet, the workflow Petrinet designer, an open source tool to edit Petrinets and workflow nets. Welcome, Thomas. It's great to have you here in St. Augustine. Thank you. Good to be here. So my first question would be, what is DHBW? What does that stand for? What is special about this university? Yeah, it stands for D, means dual. H means university in German, and BW is the state of Baden-Württemberg. Mm -hmm. And it's a university that is fully dedicated to the so-called dual model. That means students are recruited and paid by mostly regional companies mm -hmm. and sent to our campus. Oh. And in alternated phases, alternating phases, they spend three months in class and three months at their workplace, and they're ending up with a bachelor's degree. Ah, I see. So it's a very different model from open university where everyone can join and you have large classrooms, so you have a very small group of students? We I normally have groups of 30, 35 students mm -hmm. and they are all pre-selected by companies, so no students can enroll directly ah, okay. on our, in our school. Yeah, so uh, Woped is a Petrinet um, editor or workflow net editor, so the first question would be when did you first uh, get into contact with Petrinets. Yeah, it's been my studies in University of Bonn. Oh, I see. Yes. <laughs> so I'm back here yes. now. And there was a professor, Kurt Lautenbach, who was one of the first PhD students of Mr. Petri in, uh, himself. Mm -hmm. And he taught uh, a lecture on Petrinets in my, in my curriculum. And later, a little bit later, I worked also as a student assistant even closer to here in St. Augustine in the GMD, which is now the Fraunhofer yeah. Research Plant. And by coincidence, of course, I have been working as a little, little student assistant in the same hallway. At the end of the hallway, there was a door written on c.a.petri. Oh, oh, I met him good. twice in three years. Oh, I see. Yeah. I have never uh, met him, unfortunately. So, yeah, that's, that's of course, a, a great... Uh, honor to, to have seen him directly. Yeah, so what is the difference between a Petrinet and a workflow net? Yeah, a Petrinet is a, a modeling language, a very powerful modeling language that is, that is able to express concurrency and is a formal, that means executable language. Workflow nets that have been introduced by Will van der Alts some 20 years ago, they are an additional notation that is put on top of Petrinets to, this, uh, to um, enable uh, operators like X, OR, and AND, mm -hmm. and some other um, elements that uh, allow Petrinets to be used as descriptions of business processes. And there's another more formal definition of a workflow net that means that the graph, it can be a normal Petri net or a workflow net like in the first definition that has one entry point, one exit point, and the uh, control flow in between is a strongly connected graph. I see. So this is the single entry, single exit yes, uh, uh, topology. Okay. Yeah, great. So um, when did you um, first come up with the idea of developing something like Woped? I mean, that is a yes. big uh, endeavor, I suppose. When I started my teaching at the university in 2001, um, I was missing a suitable tool for the content I was teaching at that time, which was in one some lectures, patchy nets. So I was looking for a good tool. They're all maybe quite nice, but not covering the functionality I needed. So I, it was a good coincidence that a student asked me in 2003, it was Simon Landes, who mm -hmm. wanted to write his bachelor thesis on a very programming intensive topic. And I suggested him just, oh, why not writing an editor and analysis tool for Petrinets uh, that can be used in education. And he started to do that, and within the three months of his uh, time for the bachelor thesis, he was, has created the first version of Warped. Oh, Since then, it has, of course, been evolved over the last 20 years. Yeah. 
So with a, with a student, I mean, that's that's really great uh, to have students like that. I mean, uh, um, sometimes I wish I had students like that all the time who, who come and yeah, say, I want to develop a tool, you know, you that's really great. Yeah. <laughs> Must be lucky. Yeah, yeah OK. Yeah, great. Um, so when when we look at um, workflow nets and Petri nets, because with Wopet you can model simple Petri nets, um, uh, any Petri net, in fact, and these special workflow nets. What is the difference in Wopet? Are there certain parts of Wopet that are specialized for workflow nets, for, uh, I don't know, analysis tools or, or things like that? Yeah, in general, you can apply all the analysis algorithms also to regular Petri nets, where you're just skipping all the extensions that are provided by the workflow net mm -hmm. class. But of course, in most cases, the anal to applying the, me the, the methods is only uh, useful for workflow net mm -hmm. extended Petri nets. So you want to know about um, capacity planning, where you need, of course, to have some understanding of a resource model, or you need to uh, do, um, to run a simulation that includes some operators like AND and XOR, then it's much better to do that on the base of a workflow net. Okay. Um, Wopet stores its files in, in a format called PNML. Um, what is that format about? Yeah, it was a good idea, maybe also some 20 years ago or even longer, uh, to create some sort of exchange format for files that contain PetriNet descriptions. So it is still a, um, a, a standard and is still used, but I have to admit very, very few tools adopted to this. And there's not so many possibilities to exchange models from between Wopet and other software. Mm -hmm. Of course, there has been a development in industry that goes straight into another direction, in particular led to the um, to coming up of the BPMN as a language, which has consumed much more mm -hmm. resources also on the researcher's side. And that is one big explanation why Apache nets are not so common and not so many tools uh, uh, um, around. And that's why the standard is there but it's not really worth okay. that much. Uh -huh. um, what about um, business processes? Because the uh, workflow nets are, are made for uh, modeling business processes. You can also simulate business processes. Um, I, I have, of, of course, looked at the functionality there. And there is a connection to process mining. What is the connection to process mining and, and simulation there? Yeah, you can use Wopet to simulate processes and at the same time uh, create event logs. Mm -hmm. So these event logs then are a sort of simulated uh, as is situation, so a little bit like a contradiction. But of course you can uh, um, make, uh, create output that is um, applicable to uh, where, where process mining tools can be applied to. Like this XES format or, or, yes. or things like that, There's CSV? An export yeah. export in XES, for yeah. example, and in CSV as well, yes. Yeah, I think that's a really great tool to, um, to show your, your results. Um, so, um, do you have an overview of um, where Wopet is used, more for pure Petri nets or more for, for workflow nets, and how do you use it in your university? Yeah, I use it, maybe I start with myself. I use it uh, for the, my lectures, where of course I'm teaching also regular Petri nets mm -hmm. as one of many, many um, modeling languages, for example, in systems analysis. And I also use it in a lecture for on business process management as one adapted uh, modeling language to describe business process. So I do both. And I would say also in the rest of the world, we have many, many users in universities, of course. It's also both, mm -hmm. both is happening. So some are more from the PetriNet community. They are using this tool to do reachability graph creation and other stuff. And others more look on the business process um, capabilities. They model processes, they analyze, they check soundness and other things. Mm, I see. Um, what is the most complex um, PetriNet or workflow net that you have seen modeled in Wopet? 
Yeah, in particular, users are sending us uh, patchy nets they uh, have problems with. And there were, of course, huge models where I really want to know how they were able to create it on this tiny monitor. Uh, but normally it's not my understanding of uh, good practice in uh, process modeling to have one huge model describing the whole company or the whole world. Uh, it should be made use in a suitable way and in a smart way of the sub-process feature that makes, uh, give, uh, defines points where some refinement is hidden on the top level and can be opened uh, for looking into details. So that should avoid having really huge models and instead having models consisting of uh, a number of uh, sub-processes. Ah, I see. Uh, you, you talked about the reachability graph or the coverability graph. Um, is, there's also, um, there may be a problem in, 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 in state explosion there, right? So, so uh, have, you, uh, have you ever seen nets that really are, uh, are intractable because of that in Volt? Yes, we had, of course, experienced some uh, examples where our algorithm is just too slow. Mm -hmm. um, it was amazingly few examples, but it's, of course, it's, in, it's a built-in property that reachability graph is exploding mm -hmm. when there's certain uh, um, uh, connections in the patchy nets uh, um, have impact on a huge number of states that can be reached. But in particular because we are making use of the coverability graph in the construction, uh, we avoid most of the problems that uh, arise from the infinity. But of course, we are not able to deal with uh, co coverability graphs that are um, just too big for the memory, but not infinite. Mm -hmm. So that's, of course, problems we, that are on another, uh, uh, on another piece of paper. Have you used uh, Vopet in, in industry projects? Personally, not really. Mm -hmm. uh, there were some talks when I'm um, doing my consulting, which I do as a side job, where considerations were taken, should we make use of patchy nets or not? But I think in any example I can remember, it was not. Uh, you didn't use, use it yourself? No, I, I didn't use it. And I suggested it, but it was not uh, agreed upon by the customer. Mm -hmm. I've seen on the web page that there are more than 3,000 users uh, registered um, on, on this on the site on the user side uh, do you have any other uh, do, you, do you know where they come from uh, i mean do they come from europe or all over the world we have uh, <coughs> counted it's it, it's become more difficult because we changed the platform some years ago so we lost probably most of the statistics before before 2020 but before 2020, we had well, more than 100,000 downloads of oh. the tool all over the world. I think it was in 120, uh, 95 countries. Mm -hmm. So that's almost the whole world. However, there were two thirds of the uh, company of the countries uh, are only one user or two users ever downloaded it. About 70% of users coming from four or five countries. That is Germany, the Netherlands, Australia, Italy, and Belgium. I see. Uh, the rest of the world, Austria probably as well, is on the, also in the top 10. Uh, but the rest of the world is more or less some exotic one person or one professor mm. with 10 students who uh, have downloaded and are working with the tool, mostly, of course, in the educational sector. I see. So um, you have recently added um, NLP, Natural Language Processing, to WOPED. Can you tell us about NLP. Yes, we uh, have got in touch by colleagues who I was working together with who were doing research on transforming a model into a readable natural language text mm -hmm. and vice versa. So from a readable text or some text, uh, textual description of a process, we can synthesize the model. So that is process to text and mm -hmm. text to process. Those two um, transformations we have elaborated algorithms for. We didn't, uh, most of the functions we did not develop ourselves. We took them over from those research projects and we put them in place that they can be used together with WOPED. So the editor can be exported to a text or when you enter a text, you can create 
uh, a visual model in the editor. Mm -hmm. um, they are still very experimental, so the texts don't really read very uh, fluent at the moment. And there were also some bugs still in that, but it, it was a good start and we wanted to continue with that. That was before ChatGBT was coming up. And uh, I have to be honest, uh, those results that come out of ChatGBT, in particular in the process to text, we just specify this file containing a process model. What does it contain? You ask this question to ChatGBT, it gives a very reasonable answer. Yeah, that's it describes amazing, yeah. action, activity by activity, operators. It even uh, is aware of resources and of loops and other things. Mm -hmm. I see. So if someone is interested in, in Wopit, where can, where can they get it? Where can they download it? That's very simple. You can follow the links on the website, okay. wopit.org. Yes, we put a link uh, in the description below. That might be helpful. <laughs> yes. And, and if someone wants to contribute to Wopet, how can someone do that? Is, is it just look at uh, SourceForge or, or, or GitHub? Where it's it? now in GitHub, in yeah. GitHub, yeah. We moved from SourceForge to GitHub some years ago, and it's, it didn't change anything with the uh, options to uh, co cooperate and to collaborate with us. If somebody is interested and wants to contribute, add some functions you always wanted to have, uh, in the tool, just let us know. We can give you some uh, introduction into the architecture and how to develop uh, WOPED. And we, we did that, of course, many, many times, but it should continue in the future. We have no, we're always interested in that. Okay. Yes, thank you very much, Thomas, uh, for this interview. I know you have to catch a train to, to the south of Germany uh, very soon. So uh, this is the end of the interview. For everyone who has um, listened and watched so far, thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, just put them in the comments below. Bye-bye. Yeah, thank you.